Hello and welcome to Screen Fever. I'm joined today by Adam Barnard for a special discussion and trailer analysis. Bumblebee is the sixth film in the ongoing Transformers series and the first spin-off movie to not be directed by Michael Bay. It is coming out December 21st, 2018, and it just dropped a trailer last night. So, Adam, what did you think of this trailer? It was it was good. Um, but for me, it stopped at being good. Like I wasn't wowed by it. I think I'm a bit jaded after how many Transformer movies now? Like you got to understand when I first saw Transformers in 2007, I was like 12 or 13 and I was just glowing. I went back to see it like three or four times. And as I've grown older and as more and more of these movies have come out, it has become like uh, nails on a chalkboard at this point. Like I saw the first three, I kind of had, they felt like I see the, had to go see the fourth one. And by the fifth one, I just, I totally checked out. So like, this is a, a bit of a reinvigoration for the franchise. It seems because it looks like an actual filmmaker captured a story and a heart that has been lacking in a lot of the movies, especially the recent ones. However, this is, this is a very preliminary glimpse. This isn't, delving into much story in fact the story we see here is very similar to what we saw with Shia LaBeouf in the 2007 one where a teenager is being introduced to Bumblebee for the first time and discovering this world so for me I'm in the camp of it has potential but I I just simply don't know enough yet yeah this has definitely been a rocky franchise and and I think there's a level of truth to the idea that we're very, at least I'm very hyped about this because it looks like the first time that a Transformers movie has the potential to be really, really good, um, you know, and at the very least competent. I mean, Travis Knight um, was was one of the head animators at Leica Studios. They did Paranorman, Coraline, Kubo and the Two Strings, which he directed. He's a very talented filmmaker, and I think his his eye for composition is all over this all over this trailer. There are actual shots, actual good shots. I love that bit where she she finds his face under the car and <laughs> yeah, then sort of like cool. trans like that's the kind of thing that like that involves the patience that Michael Bay doesn't have and involves the the technic the technical storytelling skill that Michael Bay doesn't have and and to see that to see that in a canon Transformers movie is so refreshing i mean like really really excited to see this and really really excited to see yeah, what what an actual filmmaker can do with a with a concept that is very very similar to the to the story of the, the first movie, one. you know, yeah, 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 like young kid, first car turns out to be a transformer, turns out to be Bumblebee. I mean, it's like what what Michael Bay can do with that is this sort of <laughs> raunchy, kind of off the wall, weird movie. Whereas this looks very, it looks very grounded. It looks very emotionally true. You know, it looks like the two of them have a really solid relationship. I mean, Haley Steinfeld's a really good actress and she's, she's probably acting to nothing during most of these shots and it. And you totally buy that. She's looking at (laughs) her car turning into a robot, you know? Yeah. I had this weird moment when I was watching the trailer um, and a feeling that I hadn't felt maybe since the original, which was like a genuine interest or resonance or enjoyment and not because of the visual spectacle. Like in the cinematic jargon, like if you say something is like Transformers, that is almost certainly not a compliment. Yes. If you say it's like uh, yeah, a Michael Bay movie, it's like Transformers. So it's become this like cinematic swear word and derogatory <laughs> statement. And I was sitting watching this trailer and thinking, holy crap, like Transformers can be a good franchise. Like it doesn't have to suck. Like the premise has just been so uh, dehydrated of any kind of creativity or passion beyond mayhem or bayhem as, you know, people like to call it. So this is like a, a chance for a renaissance for the franchise and especially a move away from I mean, you can't even call it the trilogy films, but this is a spinoff because we were supposed mm-hmm. to have Transformers 6, 7, 8, 9 or whatever, and that's now in jeopardy because Transformers 5 bombed. But these mm-hmm. side stories or these spinoff stories might have the heart that can save the franchise. Totally. And and the good news, too, is like, you know, I, I, I looked online at the budget for this movie and it's only $100 million, which... I mean, that'll make that'll make in its first two days easy. You know, I'm I I think this definitely has the potential to, yeah, not only just 
reinvigorate the franchise from a storytelling standpoint, but also from a monetary standpoint. I mean, the the last Transformers movie kind of bombed in the grand scheme of things. It only made about six hundred million dollars, which is like probably half of what the one before it made. So. Yeah, it was a forty percent drop. The other yeah. one did over a billion. And which I think, is like, yeah, huge. And, I, and I think yeah. the audience is dropping off because because all the movies have been so bad and, and, and the, the storytelling quality has been so poor and it's like, and it's like right off the bat from this trailer, it tells you like, no, this is going to be directed by somebody who, who's got an eye for characters, who, who, who knows that the central relationship is the heart of the movie. And yeah, quite frankly, who knows how to frame a good shot. I mean, like Bayham, Michael Bay is really good at doing all this crazy nonsense action. That's fun in the moment. But like this, this action at least, seems like it's going to have some level of intelligence to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the fact that the fifth Transformers, which is the last one bombed, is a really interesting discussion point because just last weekend, Solo came out. Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, and it was supposed to be part of this infallible franchise. And it got, I mean, oof. It's not. It's going to barely yeah. cross 400 million worldwide, which for a Star Wars film is a disaster. And and to that point, like just between last night, late last night, and this morning, early a.m. So within a span of eight hours, we had a Bumblebee trailer, a Mortal Engines trailer, and a Lego Movie trailer all drop at once. And these are yeah. all like big blockbuster franchise movies and just in a four or five week span back in april to may we had infinity war deadpool 2 and solo i'm at the point where i really do think we are reaching franchise fatigue at the very least i'm reaching franchise fatigue because i mean there's three movies coming out in one summer month and there's five trailers like ant-man the wasp venom it's just franchise superhero 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 franchise and like I think like it's it's I feel like everything's starting to get lost in the noise like I should be more excited about this Bumblebee trailer I know you are I want to be and in a more empty month or segment of cinematic releases I might very well get pumped for a Bumblebee mm -hmm. but right now I'm like oh so we, we either have a competently made blockbuster or a non-competently made blockbuster it's like I, I can't discern what's genuinely good or exciting anymore besides like the properties that i personally love for like legacy reasons yeah i mean it, i i definitely agree it's it's a really saturated market but that's that's part of why this trailer felt so refreshing to me i feel like i feel like everything's getting bigger i feel like everything's getting crazier everybody's kind of trying to one-up themselves and it's all just this you know, shoving it down your throat. Oh my gosh, you know, hey, look, Deadpool 2, more Avengers, more other Avengers who weren't in Avengers. You know, we're getting another Star Wars movie. And it's like, this was this was really cool because it, I, it felt like the franchise was really scaling back and really stripping it down to its essential elements um, for something that I'm hoping, I mean, like I haven't seen the movie yet, This I'm just judging by the trailer, but I'm hoping will be really refreshing and really special at a time where movies seem to be just yeah. <laughs> inflating exponentially and getting bigger. Well, I got to tell you, I was not uh, excited for this film as of a couple weeks ago because I knew that this project was born out of a writer's room that Michael Bay had constructed. And yeah. there's this kind of coalition of writers, not uh, dissimilar to what James Cameron was doing with Avatar, where you get a bunch of writers in a room to kind of plan out the broad strokes of the franchise. And then uh, individual writers might get assigned certain movies, but it's all overseen by some master. In the case of Avatar, I mean, in the case of Avatar, it's uh, by James Cameron. In the case of Transformers, it's by Michael Bay. Knowing his brand of storytelling, I just I felt like it was going to be another crass over the top blockbuster just with a female lead. This does seem like an actual movie mm -hmm. that uh, is designed with affection. Um, yeah. And so it kind of took me for a surprise because it's Michael's Bay is producing it. It was done in his writer's room. I, I wonder, it gives me hope that maybe some of these other spinoffs, if we get them, we'll see more creative filmmakers getting some rope. I, I think Michael Bay is genuinely giving his filmmakers 
uh, leeway to make it their own and explore different kinds of action adventures, storytelling genres or tropes, um, or a visual presentation of such a, a, tr- a transformer style adventure. Mm-hmm. And like it, 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 like I said, at the very least, this is going to give me some optimism moving forward with the franchise. Totally. So thanks for listening to our discussion today. The link to the trailer is in the description. Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. And yeah, um, stay posted for more Screen Fever discussions and have a great day.